the Thoughty Orty podcast. Mm. I had we had a really good question from Bree asking okay. does anyone feel guilty at during a shutdown for not being able to play with your animal? Because I, mm. I kind of I kind of get that too sometimes. Like sometimes like it's not I don't know if it's something related to like social battery, but I, I definitely have it for pets as well. And like I can get a little bit agitated if like pets won't leave me alone when I need to like be by myself. Um, but yeah, Bree, I can answer Bree, I can answer Bree's question like absolutely. Uh, so we have a Chihuahua and a Chinese Crested as well. Uh, the Chihuahua is called Trudy, and she's black and tan. And Karen is the Chinese Crested, um, and uh, then Maisie, obviously the Collie. Mm. And Karen is like like I was. Um, I had three sort of like small burnout episodes followed by a long meltdown, shutdown. I use the term happy meltdown by the way, Thomas. I got that from you. <laughs> Just as a way. To describe- just a way to describe like yes like last year i just had like so many amazing like and it all came at once like all out of nowhere yeah, all at once yeah. these amazing opportunities i got like corporate hospitality to go and do and see amazing things and i met all kinds of people including like some famous people and it's i got to, it was amazing but bubbled up but, like, and... yeah, but, like prolonged and then like lack of sleep and then that happy anxiety and the kind of like oh shit, i don't mess up mess up sleep for three hours running on low sleep but you're like super happy and excited and it's like all of the amazing things. Think about like any of your special interests and like the key people in those, and you get to meet them and hang out with them, and then you get to do and, and like prolong that, and you think it'll be amazing, and it is, and bang. Anyway, so I'm in my I'm in my shutdown period, and Karen is just just she can tell there's something like wrong with me, if that makes sense. I'm mm. using the term wrong mm. with me in the, from, like, the dog's perspective, and she goes and gets me a ba- she goes and gets me a bagel. She finds a bagel. I don't know where the bagel came from. It might, one of us must have given it to her like days ago. This is like a three-day-old bagel. It might have been older than that. Maybe it was from the hedge. I don't know where she got the bagel from. It was our bagel at some point. It was. <laughs> and she brought me this bagel, and she's a she's a food guarder, is Karen. She absolutely guards food. It's weird because she's a tiny dog, and she'll guard it. She'll growl at the cats. She'll growl at the big dogs. So she'll growl at everyone. Like yeah. that I'm eating. But she like literally donated this bagel to me and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting outside and I'm like, I don't want this thing. And I just threw it away and she went and got it and brought it back to me. But she's yes, like nudging it. Towards yes. Me. Yeah. And she's nudging this towards is going, what I'm talking about. Like yours and she puts it next to me and she goes on that. <laughs> and I'm just like so unimpressed and I'm just, I'm feeling absolutely <laughs> exhausted. I've got a book, uh, a book about autism on my, on my lap and I'm just utterly exhausted. I can't deal with it. Nina comes home and I'm like, oh, Nina, like, you've got to do something with Karen. She's got it. She's just, I'm just like, what's she doing? And she's watching this dog picking up this bagel, bringing it to me and nudging it towards me. She's never done it before or since. It, we now call it the bagel of love. This bagel of love, we call it. <laughs> so like, whenever like, Karen annoys me, Nina says, do you remember the bagel of love? You know, she's a good dog, Wally. Um, but yeah, I felt like really bad, Bree, honestly, for like not, like, I felt like I was kind of like not, looking after the animals yeah, like yeah. i felt like so yes I, I i do relate to that and there have been times when i've gone through really sh- depressive moments in life and it's or just haven't i haven't taken care of the animals like i should have done well i've i've looked after um people's animals before and there was one dog that i looked after who was pre- pretty much like one thing that i cannot stand myself is having an animal in the bed while I'm sleeping. I just can't do it. I know some people are okay with it and that's cool, but I really can't do it. It just makes me feel not good. Um, But wait, I was looking after this dog and like I had this, I had this experience where I was, you know, I was looking after the entire day. I was playing with it and all that. And then I was like, okay, I think I've had enough today. And so like I put it out, put it sort of, outside my room and in the dog bed and stuff and sort of went to bed yeah. and like for the, for the night it was like scratching on the doors and like no. barking and like wanting to come in and then I let it in and I put the dog bed next to my bed and then the yeah, entire yeah. night it was just trying to get into my bed and I was like, no, I, I don't want you in my bed. And it was yeah. like, cause I had a wooden floor. It was like tapping along the wooden floor, just, just trying to get onto the bed. And it was just, yeah. it's just way too that's much. Kind of it. Like, like, you can train the dogs not to, like some folks would say you can have a dogs and absolutely train them not to go on furniture, for example. Yeah. Uh, 
we, we do. We let them we let them jump on sofas. But then again, with the caveat that they're not messy and whatever. But occasionally Maisie will be running around in the fields. She'll be really muddy. And she'll come in, and the idea is we'll, we'll we'll shower her down. We've got like a hot tap with a with a with a with a thing on. We can even wash her with hot water outside. Um, again, all of these things are like conscious ways of like, how do we make this thing that's really annoying better? How do we like resolve that? Hmm. And I take a very sort of autistic view, I dare say, and I mean that in not a pejorative way, in very much a positive way. I take an autistic view of like life, and I go, what what is the thing that's irritating me the most right now, and how do I fix it? And it's like muddy dog. Okay, how do I solve muddy dog? And it's like uh, a, a tap to wash it with. And it's yes. like okay, it can't be cold because that'd be horrible. I'll give him a hot hot tap. And it's like cool, hot tap with a thing. It's always there. And you just sort of blast her down. She's a collie, by the way. So they're not they're not like fragile. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, if she comes in muddy and jumps on the sofa, it's like ah, oh, you just made me like half a day's worth of work. So it does happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We try not. To. But you can keep dogs off beds and things. But if your dog's sitting. And that dog's used to being in bed with you yeah. or being in bed with a human. Yeah, I can see how that could be a problem. Well, like, Any problem for me? If yeah. it, like, like a snoring dog. Like oh, last night is a good example. So Nina went to bed before me and I think she had Karen Trudy and one of them was snoring. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is driving me nuts. And I'm trying to like get them without waking her up so I can put them, put them away. But yeah, snoring dogs are a problem for me. But other than that, it's all good. <laughs>